Imagine your mouth as a dynamic ecosystem, bustling with activity. Now imagine an uninvited guest making an appearance. That's where HSV enters the scene. Herpes simplex virus, or HSV, is a contagious virus comprising two main types, HSV1 and HSV2. HSV1 is particularly relevant to the oral cavity. It's responsible for those pesky cold sores that appear around the mouth and the lips. On the other hand, HSV2 is often associated with genital herpes. In recent times, the line between HSV1 and 2 is becoming less distinct. HSV2, which is often associated with genital herpes, can now be found in the oral cavity due to oral genital sexual interactions. The herpes simplex virus primarily enters the oral cavity through direct contact with an infected person's saliva, skin, or mucous membranes. The virus is highly contagious and can spread through activities like kissing, sharing utensils, or engaging in oral genital contact. According to the World Health Organization in 2021, it is estimated that around 67% of people under the age of 50 are infected with HSV-1. The initial infection often occurs during childhood, when children come into contact with infected individuals, often through casual interactions like sharing food or toys. The development of a HSV infection involves a series of steps, from initial exposure to eventual establishment and potential reactivation. Let's break down these stages. Stage number one is exposure. HSV typically enters the body through direct contact with an infected person's skin, mucous membranes, or bodily fluids. Second is the initial infection, where once the virus gains entry, it travels to the nerve ganglia near the spinal cord through the nerve fibers. Here, it establishes a state of latency, where it becomes dormant and hidden within the nerve cells. The third stage is latency, and during latency, the virus remains inactive, often showing no symptoms. However, it is crucial to note that even in this dormant state, the virus is still present within the nerve cells. The fourth stage is reactivation. Factors like stress, illness, hormonal changes, or other triggers can prompt the virus to reactivate. When this happens, the virus travels back along the nerve fibers to the skin or mucous membranes, leading to the formation of cold sores or lesions. In stage five, the reactivated virus causes an outbreak, resulting in the characteristic cold sores, fever blisters, or genital lesions. These can be uncomfortable and sometimes painful. Stage six is healing. Over time, the sores or lesions begin to heal. The virus then returns to its latent state within the nerve ganglia, waiting for another trigger to reactivate. HSV's unique features lie in its ability to switch between an active, symptomatic phase and a dormant, asymptomatic phase. This cycle of reactivation and dormancy can repeat multiple times throughout a person's life. Several factors can predispose individuals to HSV infections and influence the development of outbreaks. These factors include close contact with an infected person, like kissing, sharing utensils, and sexual activity. Secondly, being immunocompromised, as in the case with HIV, organ transplants, and chemotherapy increase susceptibility to HSV infections. Additionally, stress and illness also weaken immune defenses, causing HSV reactivation and cold sores. Sun exposure, especially on the lips, triggers HSV outbreaks as well. This is due to the UV radiation. Hormonal changes, like menstruation, can also reactivate HSV, leading to cold sores. Female genital anatomy and high-risk sexual activity for both males and females also raise the risk of HSV. Medical procedures such as surgery or dental work may occasionally trigger HSV reactivation, especially when coupled with compromised immunity. The diagnosis of HSV involves both clinical assessment and patient history. However, in some cases, additional testing is necessary for confirmation. This all starts with gathering information about past outbreaks, exposure to infected individuals, and symptom patterns. This is then followed by a clinical examination, which includes visually inspecting sores to identify characteristic signs of HSV, which are small, 
blister-like spots around the lips. Additional testing includes viral culture, which takes a swab of a sore and then culture it to identify the virus. PCR test, which is molecular testing that detects viral genetic material for accurate results. And blood tests. These usually detect antibodies against HSV, aiding in past infection identification. Combining examination, history, and test taking ensures an accurate diagnosis, guiding effective treatment and management decisions. The management of HSV involves a combination of treatment modalities and supportive therapy. These are usually aimed at alleviating symptoms, reducing the frequency of outbreaks, and providing psychological support. Treatment modalities include antiviral medications such as acyclovir, valacyclovir, and famcyclovir. These drugs inhibit viral replication, reducing the duration and severity of outbreaks. These are generally in the form of creams and ointments. Supportive therapy is necessary and it usually involves patient education to provide comprehensive information about HSV transmission, triggers, and preventative measures. These usually empower patients to actively manage their condition. Most importantly, addressing psychological impact of HSV outbreaks through counseling and support groups, which can aid patients in coping with the emotional distress. Presently, there's no cure for HSV infections. The virus establishes a latent state within the nerve ganglia, making complete eradication a very challenging thing to do. However, medical interventions can control viral activity and mitigate symptoms effectively. To summarize, HSV is a contagious infection with two main types, HSV1 and 2, impacting both oral and genital regions respectively. While no cure exists, Medical interventions like antiviral medications effectively manage symptoms and outbreaks. Understanding the virus transmission risk factors and available treatments empower patients and individuals to make informed decisions for their well-being.